Whether they're pediatric brain tumors, whether they're skull-based tumors, whether they're intraaxial tumors or tumors within the brain, whether they're things you've heard of like glioblastoma or metastasis, which are tumors that come from elsewhere. Me and a number of my colleagues are experts in each one of these types of different kinds of brain tumors. Beyond intraoperative MRI, which allows us to remove as much of it as possible, we've adopted another technology specifically for a tumor called glioblastoma, which allows us to identify tumor while we're operating. What that technology is called is 5-ALA. 5-ALA is a chemical that the patient drinks. It makes them photosensitive for 24 to 48 hours. But what it does do specifically for glioblastoma is that it gets incorporated into the glioblastoma very easily for some reason. So what that allows us to do is as we're operating, using white light, just like we used to see every day, we can then turn out the lights in the room and activate a fluorescent filter on our microscope and have the tumor glow bright pink. So normally when I'm looking into a field, meaning you know I'm looking through my microscope into a brain, I see brain, I see blood vessels, I see bleeding, hopefully not, but if I, if I do, I stop it. <laughs> and I can very quickly tell sometimes what's normal, what's abnormal. I decide using all my other technologies where I want to work, how I want to do it. But there are some tumors like glioblastoma that infiltrate. So yes, they form a solid mass or necrotic or liquidy mass in the brain that does not have any brain tissue in it. But we know that that type of tumor has grown cells that grow into what looks like normal brain. And glioblastoma is one of those tumors that has been shown again and again to have improved survivability if you remove as much of it as possible. But again, as safely as possible. So what this does is lets us change our visualization from just white light to this floor. And what happens is, is that the tumor glows bright pink. The brain behind it turns black. So it is very easy to see that this is tumor or at least brain with infiltrated tumor cells growing through it. And then it's up to us to decide to resect it, how far to go, because at some point we know, well, there is brain that does this specific function. At this point, I can only go so far. But what it does is allows us to really get to the absolute edge of those safe margins and resect as much of it as possible. And that has been shown again through multiple studies to improve outcomes of patients with glioblastoma. Glioblastoma is unfortunately almost universally fatal. Most people don't survive beyond anywhere from a year and a half to two and a half years. However, with you know, maximal surgical resection using whatever you can. You know, if you're just taking out extra brain, which is sometimes very challenging to do depending on where the tumor is, whether you're using an intraoperative MRI or 5-ALA, whatever you're doing to remove as much of it as possible is shown to have great benefit and buy people as much time as possible with their families, despite having such a grim diagnosis. The principle of oncology is that you don't just remove the area of skin or tissue that has the tumor, you remove a little extra in case there's a straggling cell here and there that's grown into it. That's not a that's a good oncologic principle anywhere else in the body, but it's very rarely applied to the brain. You can't just can't take out chunks of brain. You have to know where those borders are, whether you're doing an intraoperative MRI scan, whether they're using 5-ALA or anything else for that matter. And you have to know where the functional brain is. So all the studies that we do, you know, as part of our surgical epilepsy program to determine where function is, we actually apply to brain tumor patients to say, okay, this area of the brain is very important. The tumor is right beside there. How am I going to ensure that I preserve that functioning brain? What kind of tips and tricks do I have? So we often use technology and techniques from one type of surgery to apply to another to, to achieve our goals as safely as possible. That's what we've trained to do and it's, it's very, very rewarding.